How do you as a practitioner, as you're looking at this explosion of these different uh, options coming at you, how do you make an evaluation? I've had people ask me that uh, recently, like so much is happening now. I don't even know how to evaluate one option versus another. Do you have any any uh, thoughts on framing that? I think there's a bunch of different axes that you could kind of narrow down your choices along. So let's say that you have a commercial use case, right? That alone is a filter by which you can knock out a huge amount of models because just looking at the ones we've listed so far, zero scope, released under Creative Commons, non-commercial, can't use it. Open Chat, released under the Llama license, can't use it for commercial. Uh, Stable Diffusion XL 0.9, available only for research, can't use it. So not that you couldn't prototype with it or that it, versions of this wouldn't be eventually released. Um, or you could access them in other commercial products, but that kind of does narrow down your cases quite a bit. Whereas you look at certain models like the MPT family from Mosaic released under licenses that allow you to use them for commercial purposes, et cetera. So that's an easy one. What is your use case? Are you, are you commercial? Well, that knocks out a whole bunch. Then you have a smaller set. And then I think you need to do a second layer of filtering, which is Think about your practical use of this model. So for example, let's say that I want to use an LLM to extract a bunch of information from a huge number of unstructured documents, right? Uh, I've got maybe millions of documents and I want to extract information from them. Okay, well, if each inference is going to take 20 or 30 seconds for me and I would need to extract a bunch of in information, then that's going to become a major problem. So then I need to think about like, how am I going to use this? And what are the constraints around like the inference speed and the interaction with the model or the context link that I'm putting in, in the case of large language models, do I need to put in a bunch of information or a small amount? And that narrows down to models that are maybe smaller that can be run faster for inference or models that support larger inputs, right? So there's there's those concerns. And then finally, once you get down to that, let's say you found one that fits your your use case and the constraints that you're working under, then I think it gets down to this sort of, I guess we call it old fashioned, oh, it's not that old fashioned, create yourself a test set. That's That's still the best way to do this, right? If you have, you know, even 100, 200 examples that you've manually labeled as this is what I would like to go in and this is what I would like to come out, then you should just check the output and see, you know, what is the accuracy or how does the output compare? How would I rate these as failure or what? That's still the way to do it.